get ourselves started. Welcome everybody. Let's call our meeting to order. It, welcome Mark and David, the two last ones that I had as a hello too. It's so nice to see everybody. Mel is the only one that we can't quite see, but we're gonna call the meeting to order right at 5 p.m. And today is August 14, 2024. And, and we have a full four packet. So I'm gonna jump right into, into, the, into the meeting. Hopefully everybody had a chance to review the packet. So our first order of business uh, today, uh, well, first I should have said, you know, I hope that you guys are all enjoying a little bit of your summer and having a little time to spend with your family. So I know school board work seems to be just a little less in the summer, but I know that we are all involved in budget already. So thank you for all you're doing. Uh, and with that, we're going to move into adopting our board uh, norms. The, as you know, the board spent uh, time this June in the retreat finalizing and uh, separating norms, which are in your packet. Uh, I see Laura is coming in. Uh, at that time, the board decided that we would uh, vote uh, on our operating norms at our meeting, at our August meeting, where everybody would be here. Uh, the clear expectations are the foundation. Uh, these norms are you know, meant to be for having a healthy board meeting. The BSBI board operation norms are shared uh, and, and are set expectations for how the board will collectively uh, create a healthy space for productive governance to take place. Uh, given that we have already had this conversation uh, ourselves at the retreat, uh, is there a motion to adopt the operating norms uh, that have been sent in the packet? So so I moved. see. Moved. Okay, so Tara Sweet moved, and I see Linda was moving your hand. Do you set a second, Linda? No, I was making a motion. <laughs> oh. Are you okay being the second, or do you want to? Oh, sure. Second is great. Okay. So Thank Tara you. And Linda, any discussion or any? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. So second, we have the report from our resolutions committee. Uh, so before we dive into the resolutions, uh, I have a few quick notes So on the process. There are five proposed resolutions this year. Two were submitted by school boards and three were proposed by the resolutions committee. Uh, thank you to the boards and thank you to the resolutions committee and to Sandra Cameron and David Engler who facilitated the committee's work. We appreciate the time and the thoughtful process and, and you put a lot of time into this. So thank you. I'm trying to see you all, but it's hard to see that <laughs> you can see me, but thank you to the committee. Uh, and to especially to Sandra and David, because I know it's a lot of work. And Tara, thank you. This was your first year, and you guys did an awesome job. So the resolution committee members are Tara Sweet. She was the chair of the resolutions committee. Linda Smith, Suzanne Buck, Dan MacArthur, Tara and Arneson, who couldn't be with us today. Gaston, eh, Melanie, Mark Kaufman, Nancy Russell, and Laura Williams. And Bart. And Bart. And yeah, sorry, Bart. Yeah. The bylaws specify two different types of resolutions, the regular and the continuing. I know that this is repetitive for some of you that have been in the BSBA for a little, but just uh, let's just do it. Uh, so the bylaws state, each position shall be voted as a resolution or continuing resolution. Continuing resolution shall be statements of association policy, which are of ongoing or permanent nature and shall be in effect until amended at a subsequent annual meeting of the association. We refer to those resolution as continuing or regular resolutions. A resolution shall be statements of specific positions on behalf of the association and shall be if in effect until the next annual meeting when they might be deleted, continued, or amended by vote of the membership. Uh, based on this, the resolutions committed to on two tasks. One was to make sure each of the new resolutions brought forward by the member boards and the resolutions committee are designated as regular or continuing resolutions. We'll cover the categorization of each resolution as we consider them. The second thing the resolutions committee did was re is review all regular and continuing resolutions and made recommendations to amend 
delete or continue for regular resolutions only. Uh, we have had some confusion in the past when taking motions and resolutions that try to account for the resolutions committee recommendation. For simplicity today, uh, I hope that we can, uh, regardless of the committee's recommendation, uh, all motions should be made relative to the board's recommendation. For example, move the board recommendation resolution, for example, one as a continuing resolution. So for that motion, do you want the board to recommend the resolution pass vote? Yes. Am I making it more confusing? Hopefully no. If you want the, res the board to recommend that resolution does not pass vote, no. As we go through the resolutions, I will ask our chair, Tara Sweet, of the resolutions committee to read the resolution, not there were areas, but, uh, but provide the community's recommendation, okay? So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tara, to start with resolution one. Okay, so resolution one was proposed by the Norwich School District and the subject is residential and non-residential property tax rates. The proposed resolution reads as follows. The VSBA calls upon the General Assembly to examine the impact and feasibility of rising, raising the non-residential tax rate to the same rate as the homestead tax rate in every town where the non-residential tax rate is lower than the homestead tax rate. The VSBA calls upon the General Assembly to examine the impact of non-residential tax rate and homestead tax rates in every town where the non-residential tax rate is lower than the homestead tax rate. The committee's recommendation was to pass as a continuing resolution. Thank you, Tara. Is there a motion from the board to recommend that the proposed resolution pass as a continuing resolution? I will make that motion, Dan MacArthur. Thank you, Dan. A second? I will second it. Thank you, Linda. Any discussion? Wow, being not. <laughs> I'm like waiting. I wait like the teachers, just wait. Nothing, nothing. Oh, wow. All of those in favor uh, of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, the resolution passes. Okay, go ahead, Tara. All right, proposed resolution two was submitted by the Lake Region Union High School School Board, and the subject is data collection and reporting. It proposes to amend the current resolution by adding the following language. The agency shall gather input regularly from local districts to ascertain how the ascertain, sorry, how the data collection process could be improved in order to A, make it more useful for informing curriculum and program development, B, make it more useful for evaluation of curriculum and programs, C, evaluate the usefulness of the data and identify possible ways to streamline the data gathering process and reduce the burden on local districts. Five, the agency should report regularly to policymakers, educators, and the public on what the input was and how it is to be used. The committee's recommendation was to take no position. The reason for the recommendation is that while the committee agreed with the intention of the proposal, it would benefit from greater specificity so that the amendment's objectives were clear because they weren't very clear to us. So with that, is there a motion from the board to take no position on the proposed resolution number two? So moved, Mark Hannig. Thank you, Mark. And a second? Seconded, Bart Bazaar. Thank you, Bart. So Mark and Bart, you got that, Carrie? Any discussion? Yes, can I just confirm that the motion was to take no position, it wasn't to pass? Yes. Correct. Okay. The motion is to take no position on the proposed resolution number two. Thank you. I just have, um, I have a question. I don't know. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was the resolution that our, our school board came up with in that. I'm so not clear on, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. I'm not. Yeah, you... there's a little echo in when you speak, but we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my question would be if we wanted to change it to make it more specific, that could be done on the floor of the 
of the um, meeting. Is that correct? The, for the full participation? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. There are some um, mechanisms and <laughs> rules in the bylaws about how you do that. Um, that you would want to um, pay attention to, and I could happily go over those with you, Barbara. Yeah, one one kind of it's, it's a little it was a little unclear to me how those apply in a virtual meeting because we have the virtual business meeting this year. Yeah, so the sixty copies wouldn't be so. Yeah, we would. That's why yeah. I think it would be best to to run it by you with you just to talk to you, Barbara. If if that yeah, I mean I I, I, I would I would like to work it so that it's. Um, if it's more specific, but I was kind of at a loss on how to do that. And we decided just to, since so that I, I wasn't contacted about it until it was like almost time to get this together for the meeting. So um, I think that, you know, the, the, in other words, the timeline was pretty short. And so um, if there's some other additional work that can be done on the resolution to at least, um, you know, have something that makes everybody happy, so to speak, uh, I don't know the best way to do that. Rather than wait for the next meeting, you know, I mean, for the for the annual meeting, or maybe another way. You know what and I mean? The, yes, totally, uh, Barbara. I think the one thing to con uh, to consider and remember is that this uh, the way that the the board budget, and regardless the way that the budget the board budget, this is going to come to the entire uh, to the entire membership. So the membership might feel differently, and when you explain it to the membership, so so that is another option too. But uh, we will look into how to best make it uh, for you to make any changes before that virtual meeting. Okay, thank you. I see there's other hands. So Gaston, and I, I, let me see who was first because I don't have it right now. I think it Gaston was, was first. yeah, Gaston was first. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Hey, Barbara, I, you know, Clearly, this is this is something uh, a resolution that that we need and and certainly want to support. Uh, for me personally, um, it was item number five that threw me off. Um, I was really not sure. It, it's the latter part and the public on what the input was and how it was used. I'm not really sure what is being driven at at determining what the input was. Do, and well, so that was the part that was unclear to me over. Yeah, it's because um, we're asking that the agency actually hear from local districts about how they're using the data and whether it's, you know, I'm not sure this is the exact, I have to go back and see. Um, but basically the idea is that the agency is putting out these requests, but they don't seem to get much feedback or take in much feedback from the districts who have to produce the data on um, in terms of what kind of burden it is and in terms of how it's used and how um, how they can use it and and find it useful. And so I, we were looking at a back and forth kind of process where the districts would be involved, the districts who have to come up with the data would be involved in um, the development of what's required and and so on. And so I guess, just need to phrase, to say it a little bit better. <laughs> so Thanks. to make them a little account more accountable for what they're asking the districts to do. Thank Does that you. make sense? Yes, thank you, Barbara. And I think Mark might be saying what I was gonna say. So I'm gonna let Mark go first. <laughs> I was going to say that last year we had a resolution that created a task force that was going to look into how does the AOE do its job. And we're currently writing a report. And the biggest thing we are talking about is data. And so it, while you can go forward with this resolution, you might also want to contact um, Claire Wool, who's the chair of that task force, and just make sure that your thoughts on on what we're doing about data collection are being reflected within the report. I think most of what you're asking for, we've already put in there. So I, I actually okay. think that a lot of what your concerns are, are gonna be in the report that's gonna be presented to uh, everyone in October. And then once we get approval from BSBA membership, then it's gonna hand it over to the General Assembly, AOE and the governor. Okay, so all that so basically the timing of the task force and their work is not really 
you know, didn't jive with the resolution thing and it, so that we could do that. So Well, it's I'll great to keep pushing this forward on a number of fronts. I have, I have no problem with making sure that it gets put out there. But I think a lot of the concerns that are, are listed in that your resolution, we're trying to cover. Um, so if you had a quick talk with Claire, just to make sure that she's in agreement like, okay. yeah that is that are, those okay. are things we well are in that case i mean about. we don't need to do the resolution if that's if it's going to be taken care of in the report but although the report um the resolution has a slightly different uh, uh the resolutions have a slightly different use right or purpose in terms i of think it's probably forming. still good to put it before the, the board at the business meeting and have them vote on it like i said it's good to to have this from different fronts but even if it weren't to pass, I think most of the concerns are being okay. come at from a different angle. Yeah, so thank you. Thank I you. I wouldn't sweat about it. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that, yeah, Barbara. So I don't. I think it's already part of our resolutions too. So it will come front to the entire membership. And and I would say you want, you might want to connect with you know Sue, Sandra, and, and myself are also been involved in the task force. But Sandra would have. It, the latest and you can you know we are going to have an update on the task force too but but i okay. think there's a solution also stands yeah with that uh, welcome neil we're in resolution two thank you for being with us uh, so uh, all those in favor of voting to take no position on proposed resolution number mm -hmm. two please signify by saying aye or raising your hand aye. Aye. okay any opposed You're opposed, Barbara. And then Mel, are you opposed? Or sorry, it was a little because some of them are delayed. Do you mind speaking up if you're opposed? Her hand was raised right. when you when you asked for the original VAs. It does. That's what I thought, but her hand is still up. So okay. So the resolution. Yeah, Melanie's Melanie's on the road, so I think she's having a uh, hard time. Okay. She's traveling right now, I think. Okay, so the motion passes as read. Okay, Tara, back to you. Yes, Resolution I'm, three. I'm sorry, folks. Um, yes, I'm going to try to keep using reactions and then try to get them down as soon as possible after the vote. But I no, no worries. No, no, no worries, Mel. No worries. Drive safe. Okay. Yeah, I'm not driving. Just you know, my husband is, so we're good. Okay, okay proposed Tara. resolution three was submitted by the Resolutions Committee and the subject is artificial intelligence. The proposed resolution reads as follows. The VSBA advocates for legislation that would require the Agency of Education in consultation with the Agency of Digital Services Division of Artificial Intelligence to take all the needed actions necessary for the responsible use of artificial intelligence in Vermont schools. This may include model policies, guidelines for use and code of ethics. The committee's recommendation was to pass as a continuing resolution. Okay, so is there a motion for the board to recommend the proposed resolution number three? Michael has Pass. a motion. Yeah, Michael, you a motion? You're muted. No, no, I was intending to speak on it when we get the motion, sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay. One step ahead. Okay. So I'm, yes. I'm, happy, I'm happy to make a motion to, to uh, uh, Put a pass Recom on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Recommended yeah. as a continuing resolution, Jim. Good. As a continuing resolution, pass with a pass recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I'll Thank you, Jim. I'll second out. Oh, there we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, Dan, uh, I'm going to give it to Dan, uh, Linda, because yeah. you've already got one. All right. Yeah. So, Jim moved in second. And uh, Mr. Michael Inners, you were on duck. Do you have a question? Just one thing. I, I, I have a just I think there's a typo in the second whereas I think the source material says 81 percent not eight percent for our parents so I just think yeah. it's a typo at least the copy I the copy that came in the packet says eight percent I think it's supposed to be 81 okay and thank you and then and the uh substantive thing I have I'm 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 very leery of these model policies and then on the next one I'll have a lot more to say about that but I just just I'm a little I'm leery about these model policies that we're required to adopt. This one doesn't say mandatory, so that's good. But um, guidance and guidelines and stuff would be helpful. But I'm not sure I want to see a model policy. Just 
Okay, thank you, Michael. Any other discussion on resolution number three? Or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, back to you, Tara. I, I abstain on that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it there. Okay. okay. Proposed resolution I, I for. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. a quick question. Does that mean it passed by majority with one abstention or it passes unanimously? Passes majority. Yeah, it's not okay. unanimously. So just, yeah. And I, I just said the resolution passed. So sorry, Michael, I was not trying to not acknowledge your abstention, but the resolution passed this. So sorry. Okay. Go okay. ahead, Tara. Proposed resolution four was submitted by the also by the resolutions committee, and the subject is cell phone news, cell phones in school. The proposed resolution reads as follows. The VSBA supports legislation that would require school districts to adopt a model policy concerning use of cell phones and other personal electronics devices in schools. The policy shall address at a minimum the specific circumstances or time periods during which the cell phone or personal electronic device is permitted when their use is prohibited and any relevant expectations for instances such as disability accommodation, medical needs, or other emergencies. The committee's recommendation was to pass as a continuing resolution. Is there a motion for the board to recommend the proposed resolution number four pass as a continuing resolution? Is that, Dan, are you making a motion? No, I wanted to okay. um, speak to Michael's point though, if I might, be before yeah, we hold, get to it. Yeah, to uh, just hold on one minute and then we'll do it because just we're on the way, Gaston. Laura, I'll make that motion, over. Thank you, thank you. And a second. Oh, I see you, Joe. Thank I'll, you, Joe. I'll it. Thank you, Joe. And now go ahead, Dan. Yeah, so um, I, I believe, and David uh, maybe be able to correct me, that when the resolutions committee was looking at this, we identified that word model uh, as being inappropriate. And I think, David, you had said that you agreed that that should not be in there, um, that the that it should simply say adopt a policy and then describe what that policy is supposed to do but um, but remove the word Michael from that. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, model from that. Um, any other recollections on that? Because I, I think our point was exactly what Michael making now is that you either have a model policy that you're required to adopt or you're required to adopt a policy uh, with your own um, input into the following items. I do remember that discussion, Dan. Anybody else in the committee? I don't know. I, I'll be looking at you, Sandra and David. Yes, I agree. The work model policy refers to the VSBA's samples that we provide, but yeah. when a district adopts, it remove the word model. Okay. So could I make a motion, Floor, that we, uh, that we um, uh, move to pass this uh, resolution having removed the word model from it. Yes, or, we can or, do that. We we have, uh, can, I'm wondering if Gaston will want to make a friendly. I'll be, I'll be very happy to, to modify my motion to, to indicate that as edited that we'll remove the word model. Okay. Very Is happy. that okay with the parliamentarians? I think it's okay. I do this, not that, yeah. Okay, and uh, we're not quite done with questions. I'm gonna go now. Michael, you're ready? I'm gonna let Jim go first. Okay, uh, thanks. Now, I just wanted to check. I think you know my my understanding is a a model policy is something as a model policy doesn't necessarily mean that it is a required policy. Mm -hmm. It's just you know we we put out model policies that you know school districts can decide. To adopt, but then there are other policies when it's required. Essentially, it's required by statute, and there may be a model policy that fits that. But I don't, I don't think model equates to required. Is that am I right on that? 
Yes, you're correct. Okay. Okay. So any, it, Michael, go ahead. Well, actually, let me go. Let me let Mel go first because you've already had a chance to speak. Mel, go first, and then Michael. No, Jim just said exactly what I was going to say. The mandatory right. model are not the same thing. Yeah. Okay, Michael. Yeah, but unfortunately, what's happened a couple of last, there's been several in the last few years where, in fact, they were, in fact, mandated. The word model was used, but in fact, they were they were mandatory. Um, the electronic communications policy and the wellness policy are one that come to mind, uh, both of which where we were required to adopt the model. Basically, the AOE was to develop a model policy and we were required to adopt it. Uh, pretty much as written by AOE. And in both of those cases, I had real problems with the policy developed by AOE, both due to its micro, in the case of the wellness one in particular, the micromanagement, and in the case of electronic communication, one's just bad drafting. Um, so what's often happened in the legislature the last few years is when we get one of these policies, they basically say, yeah, you got to have to have a policy. And the AOE is going to tell you what the policy has to have in it in detail. Right. So they're effectively regulations that have been adopted outside the regulatory process. Um, so, I mean, I really have a I'm very, very cautious about calling for the AOE to write model policies because it somehow seems that sometimes they turn into things we have to uh, we have to adopt. Um, and it's, it's been a, sort of a creeping problem in the last few years. Um, the other thing I want to be cautious about with this one is I'm sure you're all aware of the bill that was floating around last session. Um, and the bill last session uh, basically would have allowed parents to tell us that students couldn't use computers at all in school um, and a few other unpleasant effects, mm -hmm. um, which would have been very difficult. And I'm a little worried about wading into this, giving an opening for that type of bill again. Um, so I will, I'm, I'm hesitant on this policy. I, I understand the concerns because uh, it's a big problem. Um, but I'm not sure we want to okay. promote a vehicle for, for some really bad policies to be attached along the way. Okay. It Sandra, did you have your hand up or do you want to say something? Go ahead. It's okay just to add, um, Michael, I appreciate all that you're saying. I just wanted to add that the requirement that passed um, this spring in the legislative session, Act 150, around library selection of library materials, that language required school boards to adopt policy by whom it's written. So it can go in that direction. I just wanted to offer that as an, a recent example of that was not a charge to the AOE. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Oh, Barbara, go ahead. I seem to have a pro problem getting my hand to, to show up on the screen, but um, back to the task force. Um, it seems that a lot of these issues that we all have with uh, the AOE has to do with their being able to do a lot of things unilaterally without getting input from the school districts or taking into account uh, how the impact might be on the school districts. And I'm hoping that uh, there'll be some, some strong uh, um, recommendations that uh, the AOE work more collaboratively with local school districts because that's what the, the things that Michael was uh, talking about really uh, speak to that. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, we have a motion on the table. So all of those in favor of passing the recommended resolution number four, four as amended in, as a continuing resolution, please signify by raising your hand or saying aye. Okay, I see. Aye. All right, any opposed? Any abstention? Seeing none, I think the, the pass is unanimously. You are not abstaining, right, Michael? No, I was voting no. <laughs> I voted no as well. There are two. Okay, no's. so two no's. So, Tara, moving to resolution five. 
Yes, resolution five was proposed by the resolutions committee and the subject is the secretary of education. The proposed resolution adds language to 3 VSA 2702 as follows. The underlying language is what's new. Um, C, at the time of the appointment, the secretary holds an advanced degree in education, public administration or related field shall have held at least a position of teacher, professor, educational administrator or equivalent position. The secretary shall have expertise in public education management and policy and demonstrated leadership and management abilities, including knowledge of public educational policy and practice, the familiarity with school governance structures. The committee's recommendation was passed as a continuing resolution. Okay, is there a motion from the board to recommend the proposed resolution pass as a continuing resolution? So moved, this is Dan. Thank you, Dan. A second? Barbara? Second. Is that, was that correct, Barbara? Were you second it? Yeah, you're muted, so, okay. All right. Yes, I second it. Okay, and I'm gonna try to go slower this time. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Stick with that. I love hearing your voices, but I'm gonna stick with that, okay. I think. What about discussion floor? Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Dan. Any discussion? I'm just so excited about the resolution. Go. Uh, Mark. Just a quick grammar thing. Should the last sentence be public education policy and practice and a familiarity rather than comma a familiarity? Just it reads funny to me. I think it's okay, but I don't. Uh, David. What do you think? Isn't the last thing, including knowledge of public education policy and practice, comma? Yes, that that was my error that we removed a, we removed a, 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 the last part of that sentence, and I failed to go back and, and add the end. So that's correct. That's appropriate. Okay, great. Any other discussion? Gaston. Yeah, Flora, sorry. So that's okay. The question I have is, you know, when when we look at um, the degrees that we're expecting the person to to have or to hold, and public administration is is one of those. I I so my question is, I don't know enough about public administration, but does public administration equate to school governance and school structures or is public administration when i think of it it's sort of more you know uh municipality type of thing so you know and then going into politics but i guess everything is politics these days i i, I just don't understand you know how public administration and an advanced degree in education are similar does that make sense over if I'm reading well the resolution, it says expertise is not saying a degree in in, knowledge, in public education policy and practice and familiarity, right? It's no, it actually says or, degree. I think oh, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, the first sentence of C, yeah. Holds oh, an advanced sentence. degree in education, public administration, or a related field. Over. I think it's okay, but Sandra and David and committee, Tara. <laughs> the only thing I can say is the committee did that. I don't know that I should offer opinion, but Sue if or David, if you have David. advice. I, I think we included it because you're, you're, you're right, Gaston, that it's not particular to public education, but it is, it is one can use that that background and focus on education. It's just, it's it's really just to open up the door a, a little bit, but still have relevant advanced degree. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's actually how I was reading it too. You got a little wider on the degree, but then you go okay. and say, you also need to have held a position somewhere within education, which will help. Like if you only have your municipalities advanced degree, 
at least you have experience in education. Thank you. Okay. okay, any other discussion on resolution five? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, I see a view. Uh, any, any opposed? I don't see any, any abstentions. I don't see any, and I'm assuming it's passing unanimously, right? Melanie is the only. Okay, Tara. All right, so now we're going to move on to the committee's. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That would be. An All right, so now we're moving on to the committee's recommendation for existing resolutions. Please see the table on page eight of the resolutions committee report or page 11 of the board packet um, for the 12 existing resolutions and the committee's recommendations. Of the 12 resolutions, the committee recommends retaining seven of them and amending the remaining five resolutions. Of these five resolutions that are recommended to be amended, for three of them, the amendment includes merging into another resolution so that all the information is in one place. Sorry, I was still, I was trying to find the unmute. Uh, Dan, um, I I don't know if you want to do this, Floor. I'd like to make a motion that we um, do all of the above all at once. Okay. That, yeah, and I difficult. Yeah, and I, I my my job is is there any any resolution that the committee wants to to pull out? Considering can what I, Dan just said, I'm saying that there's none. But hey, Mark, I just get a clarification. I I'm reading. I'm seeing six are being asked to be retained and one is being asked to be repealed and the rest were amended. Correct. Of those says five seven retains. We're retaining, recommends retaining seven of them and amending five resolutions. Of those I'm five only resolutions. I'm retained. I'm, one, two, three, four. I see the five. word retained oh. six times and I yes, see repeal there is. once. You're right. You're right, Mark. Yeah. When I yeah. did the script, I missed that one that says repeal. So I apologize for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's okay. the one for the task force and we'll be yeah. done. So that's why right. we're pulling it over. Right. Okay, so there's a particular resolution that you want to pull uh, or consider separately. Can somebody I'll ask a motion to adopt the changes to the existing resolutions as a slate? Hi, Floor. I'll I'll make yeah. that motion. Over. Okay. So, Mark, and then Dan, do you, could you had started, and then can I have a second? A second. I'm not sure what what the motion was. I thought my motion was to um act, to adopt the entire slate. That that would be my yeah, motion. That's that's the same motion. So that's why I was thinking that you wanted to. Second I, I will that. second. Sorry. Yes, Tom. All right. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Okay. And now let's go ahead and proceed into changes. It's just the one that is being repealed, right, Sue? You just you just, yeah, you just the did it. Slip. Yeah, last so you're year all set. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, so we're gonna move into the report from the executive uh, committee, and we have uh, we've been working on on our bylaws, and that's why I was a little distracted. I erroneously uh, closed I'm sorry. my. Uh, yeah. Laura, can I interrupt you real quick on the last sure. one? I there's actually a, just a quick typo. I think on page ten. That I wanted to get in, and I wasn't realizing we go through that so quick. Um, it says, I think the very last paragraph where it's underlined, it says world class while engaging. It's like the fourth line down. I think it's supposed to say world class education while engaging, and I just want to make sure that gets in there. Thank you. Page Melanie. 10 of our packet. Page 10 of our packet. Carrie, did you get that? 
I am actually looking for it now. So it's world class education is what I think what so. resolution Just, was it? It was on it's on page ten. Um, it is resolution of, um, one. I uh one E rolls the state in education recommended free rate. Okay. It's the exactly. second to last paragraph, line four. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and share my my screen. But first, the executive direct the executive committee has spent some time uh, looking at our bylaws. Uh, and as the executive committee conducts this annual review of the bylaws uh, of the association, recommend recommends any bylaws changes to the board of directors for action by the membership and its association at the annual meeting. The recommended changes to the bylaws okay. uh, are in the packet. Hopefully, you guys all had a uh -huh. chance to. To look at okay. them, it, there's somebody that is not muted. Are y'all going to? Sorry. And, oh, there's Carrie. Okay, thank you. So, what are it, this year recommended changes? Are it relatively really minor? I think you guys were able to see them. But what I'm going to do is share my screen just to make sure that we're all on the same. Yeah. See, hopefully, I'm doing the right. window because I have many windows open. Oh, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So sorry. I'm not trying to get you dizzy. I had it, but I mistakenly closed it. And but I'm almost there. So so this is the the first the the first change. Uh, so what is in um what is in, in yellow, you can see the, the language that is crossed. It's just moved up here. Uh, our supervisory district. I'm gonna just continue to move down. And then we, what you see up here, what it, we used to have the date 23-24, what we said is that we would just say up, we will just say the date that they last updated, right? So updated October 2024 makes more sense because our bylaws are always our bylaws instead of just saying that they were for this year. That's a minor change. And then here we just, the board of directors shall consist of the president, vice president, and treasurer. We were already saying it here. So we took out this and the board of directors. Floor, do you want comments or questions after you've gone through the whole document I, or as we go along? I was going to go through the whole document because there were so few, okay. but yep. uh, I can also go by by page, which then we will be less dizzy. So do you have a comment right now, Vice President Treasurer? Yes, I do. I don't I don't understand why we're we're crossing out vice president. Um treasurer, I don't really have any hard hard feelings one way or the other but vice president because the vice one of the roles of the vice president if you read here uh is to uh uh you know cover for the president in their absence and so um i, I just kind of wonder why we want to strike the vice president from the board of directors and and just so that you understand my where i'm coming from um, when I was a deputy commander at a, a military lab, um, the commander and I had this thing where I knew everything he knew so that, quote unquote, if he went home and had a heart attack, the organization would move forward um, because I knew, you know, all of the things that were going on. I just kind of wonder, you know, if not including the vice president in on the board of directors would put us in a precarious situation. That's all. Over. I'm going to let Jim, because I think he's going to say the same thing they're going to say. Jim, go ahead. Yeah. The it, it, the intent here is not to leave anybody out. It's, it's honestly, this is sort of the definition of the executive committee. Yeah. And the executive committee right now is is the the vice president and treasurer um our what what we have is we get two regional representatives from each of the 11 region, regions right now there's overlap in that with the vice president and treasurer so we have right now the executive committee is essentially the president the immediate past president 
and then two reps from each of the each of the regions. But the vice president and treasurer are those rep are those reps in their in their district. So like I come from Bennington region, I'm I'm the treasurer. I'm I'm automatically on the invest on the executive committee because I'm treasurer. So we only get one other regional rep from my district. So if we said that the treasurer is on it plus two reps from my district, then we'd have three reps from my district. Right, and it would increase the size of the board by two more people than you really yeah. actually have. So this was really just a you know the the way we operate now, you know it's 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 really that that those two regional reps from the from the 11 regions automatically those those that are in the position of vice president so right now you know Tara and I are on that which decreases to one the other amount of reps from our districts our regions it's just that we we just kind of noticed there was a double counting in there that this is the way we're actually operating yeah it's confusing i'm sorry but you know it's, yeah. Michael. Yeah, I was a little confused here too because the executive committee is actually further down on the next page. Uh, this the board of directors I thought was this group. Yeah, this is the board of directors, not the, the executive committee. Right, and the president, vice president, and treasurer have to be elected from within this body according to the bylaws. Right. This is what it, this yes. is the part of the bylaws that says what the board of directors consists of. And the president has never is not considered a regional rep. They there's two regional representatives from the region that the president is in. Oh, okay, that's, that's, that's not the case for the vice president. Vice president. Okay, because yeah. I'm looking because because Jim was talking about the executive committee, which is yeah, actually I, I I apologize. I I was conflating the two, sort of. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that clarifies. Who did it better? Who did it better? That okay. that clarifies things. Thank you. Yeah, so I was I was thinking of the executive committee as well. So my apologies. Over. Okay. Thank you, Sue. And thank you, Michael. If, any question about the up up any objection at using updated October twenty you know, like that? Okay. I'm just seeing heads knowing. Uh, and and this are very small, so replacing will with shall. Any questions here? Okay. Yeah. Barbara? Yeah, are we talking about, this is the executive committee we're talking about now, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to address Michael's point, rather than hand tailor depending on who is the treasurer at this period of time, at a certain period of time, wouldn't it make more sense just to say if one of the officers that's already on the board um, uh, how would we put it? In other words, um, the regional, uh, the region that has that already has a representative because of there being an officer will not have a third representative on the board. I mean, on the executive committee. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? In other words, Michael brought up the issue that if if he is treasurer is on the executive committee and there are two regional. Um, representatives on the executive committee, then there are three from that region. So if any, if the vice president is on the executive committee and the, I mean, and the treasurer is on the executive committee, then the regions that they're from need only have one more representative. That's already taken care of. In the taken care of. Yeah. That they just talked about. They, this is what allows us now to not have that. Okay. I'm going to keep going down the document. And I think that was the last change, actually. Yeah, I think that's the last change. So I'm going to stop the share to stop getting you dizzy and be able to see actually everybody's confusing face. Um, let me just open my. Agenda. We'll have to figure out a concise way to explain Space the ways. changes um, at the annual meeting. I think um, we thought when yeah. the committee discussed them, it, it it was pretty clear, but it seems like it caused quite a bit of confusion. So 
we'll have to so, so i think i caused the confusion i think you you should explain it because i created this <laughs> yeah, and I, Apologies. yeah 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 no that's okay jim and and i did the same thing because i just said it's already explained it you know because to me the language but i forget that i have already seen it so to me it was clear but it dan uh, i i'm I don't know if you're looking for a motion. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve all of these changes or suggest that the uh, full board uh, accept all of these changes. I'll second that. Okay, so Dan and Suzanne, eh, all, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Or yeah, I'll just raise your hand. Aye. One, one, two. Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. So now it, we have the report from the task of collaboration to benefit all students. And I'm just going to give that report. San Go ahead, Sandra. Hi, everyone. The task force on collaboration to benefit all students has been meeting regularly and has collected feedback from interested parties via a survey, um, some focus groups and individual discussions with uh, superintendents and other board members in different regions of the state. In addition to this, some task force members have met with interim secretary um, Boucher when she was in the position and more currently interim secretary Saunders, as well as state board of ed chair Samuelson. Uh, there is another meeting with interim secretary Saunders next week, and that was at her request to circle back and um, keep her updated on the work of the task force. The August meeting focused on task force members providing feedback to the consultant on the draft report, which will be discussed once more in September and then finalized. The task, report, task force report will be included in the VSBA annual meeting materials in October for all of you to see, and um, will also be sent to the governor and the general assembly thereafter. And I would just wanna give a huge shout out to the board members who are on that task force. It's been a large body of work and your um, sharing of knowledge and expertise has been just so incredibly valuable. Any questions? For Sandra. All right. So let's move up. A regional meeting organization for elections are next item. And Stu, are you going to take us? Yes. Through? Thank Happily. you. The regional meetings are going to be held remotely on September 5th. And we've been highlighting the regional meetings regularly in our weekly emails. The registration page for the meetings is under the events tab on our website. So we're asking all of you regional representatives to register as soon as possible for your regional meeting. Um, in your board packet, there is a page with a list of the regions and the expiration of terms of regional representatives. If your term is expiring in 2025, you will be responsible for running the business meeting and election for your region. That's the short meeting that happens at the beginning where we have the elections to this board. Um, so those of you are, who are going to be running your regional meetings are Suzanne Buck, Melanie Virgilio, Bart Bazayo, Tara Arneson, Tara Sweet. We're asking you, Tara, to run yours um, because Michael will be running again. So we need someone to run it. Um, we know that you're not going to be you know, able to run again. Um, Gaston Bathalon. And Mark Hoffman, Lisa Miser, Martine Gulick, Dan MacArthur, and Nancy Russell. So that's a list of people that would be running your regional meetings on September 5th. So if for any reason you are not able to be there, um, please let us know as soon as possible so we can figure out some other plan. Um, I do plan to email a script to each of you beforehand that you can use to make sure that you cover everything. Um, you probably have done it, most of you have done it before, so you probably understand what you need to do and um, what I'm talking about when I say I, I'll email you a script. You do not have to stick to it strictly, but we send it to you just so um, you know, you're comfortable running the meeting. Um, the regions with open seats are Central Vermont, Eastern Chittenden, Franklin Grand Isle, and Windsor. Uh, we are really happy to see that many of you uh, are running again, so there, so there is not um, 
an open seat in your region, that doesn't mean that someone, um, another person from your region couldn't run um, and we, you know, have a contested election. If you represent any of those four regions that I just talked about, Central Vermont, Eastern Chittenden, Franklin Grand Isle, or Windsor, please um, solicit interest from school board members who are interested in serving on the VSBA board. And if you identify someone who's interested in running, they should email Carrie and me to let us know of their interest and include a photo and a short bio. And we put that into the meeting materials. And the, they, we should really have that information by August 30th um, so that we can get everything pulled together by September 5th. After the regional business meetings, there will be, and though I should also mention those bi regional business meetings are all gonna be conducted in um, separate Zoom breakout rooms. And then you'll all come back together into the main Zoom room for a, an educational session on the um, governance standards applicable to school boards that are going to go into effect on July 1, 2025, um, and the, the um, rubric that will be used to evaluate um, adherence to those standards. Um, that's something that you all talked about at your retreat, but most school board members aren't as familiar with it as all of you are. We have created a model email for you to use to email the members in your region, encouraging them to attend their regional meeting. It is in your regional communication spreadsheet and Carrie sent it to you last week. Um, the Bennington regional reps, Melanie and Jim, win the award for sending out that email to their region promptly. So good job, Melanie and Jim. If there's an open seat in your region, we suggest adding language indicating that so that members who are interested can submit their information to Carrie ahead of the regional meeting. So that's a lot of information. Is, are there any questions about the regional meetings? I don't see any hands. Well, thank you for all of that, Sue, and thank you for organizing uh, all of this. So if you uh, just, you know, just really think about those regions that we need to get somebody and, and just especially think about, you know, people that we don't always see in our board, it would be really nice to get a, a little bit more diversity where there is stability, you know, any kind of, of diversity, young, uh, you know, so uh, just be thinking about that I, uh, now. Just say, uh, thank you, Sue. I'll be for that email. I haven't yeah. run a meeting in a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Mel and Jim. That was awesome. Okay, now uh, we're going to move into finance committee reports. So I'm going to give it to Jim, our treasurer. Floor, okay. can you pull up page 24 from the packet for Jim to talk about? Oh, sure. Yeah, once. Okay. Yeah, as Floor, you know, moves towards that page, you know, basically, you know, we, um, you know, a couple of updates on page 24, you see the minutes from our last finance committee meeting. Um, just before I get into the request for today, I just wanted to uh, mention one, the, the, the finance committee is made up of, I'm on it as well as, as, you know, Sue carries a key part of it, but it includes Nancy Russell, Michael Inners, and Bart Bazzio. Um we we had a, a guest a guest at our, our last meeting, Dan MacArthur. Um, but we had one of one of the things I wanted to report first, you see in point four there, we've actually now we we invested, you know, this is our restricted reserve funds, and we decided to invest essentially a quarter of it each quarter over a year. Uh, we we're through that year and now we're basically fully invested in the portfolio that that we had set up and the and the board approved sometime back as a as a you know our allocation of assets to 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 different funds. Um, but what what came up? Dan Dan presented. Um, actually, we can hold on back back. back. Yep, there, perfect. Um, we the the original portfolio that we set up was this portfolio, which. Um, you know, intended to be diversified, but, you know, pretty simple, low risk, all index funds. Um, Dan pointed out that, um, you know, we, we might want to consider 
you know, a in in the investment world, there you know you you have options to invest in in ways that can have a social impact as well as an investment impact. And so Dan brought to us with the help of uh, you know somebody he knows in his area the idea of looking at uh, doing doing something a little more essentially the the VSBA taking a a a more sort of a a not not in a strong way, but taking a position that would that we care about certain things and we should reflect those uh, to a degree in our investments. So where we uh, now invest in the you know had have been investing in an S and P 500 index, which is you know just a nice basic index. You know the the point is that the S and P index also includes companies who are in the fossil fuel and the and the weapons industry and in the tobacco industry and all this other stuff and you know it had, and suggested we make a statement by there's there's a, a a fund now we can go down to the the down a few pages there's a there's a fund that uh that dan uh brought to our attention that is also another fan, Vanguard. It's not a mutual fund, it's an ETF, but it's called ESGV, which has a, a good social, a good broad social mission that the, 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 uh, the finance committee thought that it, um, it, it made good sense as a way for us to essentially communicate to the world that, that we do care about, you know, some of these issues. Um, and you know it, it's important enough of us for to us for us to um, you know to take actually our largest uh, allocation in our investment portfolio and take it from the straight S and P 500 index into this ES you know it's ESG for Environmental Social Governance um, Fund from Vanguard. Um, the performance of the of this ESGV. Is is right on par with the S and P 500, so we're not really giving up. Um, we don't view it as as giving up, you know, much of anything in terms of our, of our potential investment earnings. But it, but it, uh, but it does say something about what what matters to us. So, the finance committee, um, you know, told Dan that you know, basic basically, the finance committee decided it was a good idea to switch from the S and P 500 index into ESGV. The way our, our, our finance procedures and all work right now is we can recommend that to the full board of directors. We can't make that change ourselves, which is a control that, so we're, you know, what we're doing right now is saying the finance committee reviewed it, thought it was a good idea. We're presenting it to the full board for a vote as to whether or not we make this change in our finance procedures uh, to change the allocation from S&P 500 index to the ESGV ETF. So that's, I talked a lot. Now I'm gonna open it up to questions or comments. I'm gonna stop Dan. the share so you can see everybody. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanna say thanks to you, Jim, and to the entire finance committee for, for listening and unanimously supporting this. It was pointed out um, that there's a slight cost to the VSBA for switching. Um, it has, as people can see, instead of, I think it's 0.05, it's 0 0.09 or something. Is it, does it cost us 30 or 40 bucks a year? Uh, I think that's, uh, I, I appreciate the finance committee making this kind of moral stance, even at the cost of 30 to $40 a year. So anyway, thank you, Jim, and everybody else on the committee. If it were 75 bucks, no, <laughs> just joking. No, it, it's a, I, I think it's, one one thing the finance committee did it did kind of you know a position that I think we all felt strongly was you know we're doing this and we think it makes absolute sense in most of the other allocations that we have there aren't ESG sort of funds that that are a good replacement in something as big as an as an S and P five hundred equivalent that is a you know all these it, it's you know we're talking about tens of billions of dollars in these funds and most of the others um you know allocations there really at this point in time isn't a comparable that that is a is a socially you know 
socially directed fund. So, you know, we're, we're, we think we're making a good statement with this. We're not looking at, you know, we, honestly, the finance committee says we don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking at, you know, trying to micromanage these investments. We're not trying to pretend we're smart about investments. We're trying to do a, you know, a, we're trying to take a very neutral stance towards this. So this is a good one, but we don't expect to be doing a whole lot of other changes. We're always open to recommendations and suggestions though. Any other questions? Okay. So I guess I'd, you know, I'd appreciate if anybody wants to make a, a motion to make that proposed change to the uh, to the investment procedures. I would make the motion. I think this is a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Linda. You. The Thank motion you, Linda. Said Linda Smith made a motion to move S and P five hundred fund to the Vanguard ESGV ETF fund. I'll second. It's Michael. Inters Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Linda. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carried. Okay. So we now move to the the election of the VSBA president. So I am going to pass it. I'm wondering if Tara or Neil would like to run the election because I can't run my own election. So not my own, but the election of the president, right? Because I'm the president. So I think I, I forget how we've done it in the past, Neil. And, and... Uh, I forget too, but I would think that Tara is extremely Tara. capable of handling this portion of the meeting. I agree. So if you wouldn't mind, Tara. All right. So, my... All right. Well, we'll take nominations for president of the VSBA. Dan. I'd love to nominate Floor. I'll second. Is there any other nominations? I'm sorry, we're still typing. I have Dan. Who is the second? Uh, Suzanne Buck. Thank you. Yep. All right, seeing no other nominations. All those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? Abstained? Looks like it's unanimous. It's back to you, Floor. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for, you know, I'm just thrilled. I really appreciate it. I love all of you. <laughs> and I love working at VSBA. It's really is a pleasure and the best board that I've ever been part of. So I'm looking forward to continue to collaborate with all of you and learning with you. I truly admire all the work that you all across the state and that includes our staff and our executive director too and and I'm continue to be really interested in the impact that we can make as a group in this beautiful public education that we all love and cherish and that makes possible our democracy so I really appreciate the confidence and I'm delighted <laughs> to be the president for another year well, I, Dan the point of order I don't believe you need a second for a nomination oh okay so as you go forward, I'm uh, I'm not referring to your presidency, but as you go forward with these um, the other elections. Okay. Right. So let me get back to my agenda now that I got distracted. And so our next uh, item of business is the VSBA strategic plan, and uh, we have changing how we are gonna. Um, report to you guys. I'm excited for this new way. So I'm going to let uh, uh, Sue, uh, we're going to focus just in one piece today. So Sue. Thank you very much. So yes, we are taking a new approach to reviewing the strategic plan monitoring report at board meetings. You're still going to get the same you know, report that you always have. 
Um, but we're going to be focusing on one goal area at each meeting. And today we're going to focus um, on the first goal area, which is stakeholder engagement. Um, one of the reasons, well, there's a couple of reasons we're doing this. One of the um, things that we learned from the board's self-evaluation that, was that there were a few board members who felt they didn't really understand the strategic plan very well. And so this is um, addressing that concern, but it's also really just a good practice to have a much more, a deeper conversation on um, sections of the strategic plan. So that's why we're making this change and um, let's see how it goes. Um, first, we'll refresh everyone's understanding of how the monitoring report is set up. So if you would please go to page 29 of your packet for this meeting, on that page, you will see the foundation of the strategic plan. And that is the beliefs, the vision, the mission and goals, which were all developed two years ago in a thorough and um, inclusive process involving um, the broader membership of the VSBA. It was done over um, several months. And as you can see, there are three goals at the bottom of that page. And the first one is stakeholder engagement. Um, and before we get into the specifics of that goal, which we are going to do, I am going to ask Sandra Cameron to provide the group with some new learning about the word stakeholder that we just actually learned about last week. And I thought it was um, important to pass it on to the board. So Sandra, please go ahead. Thanks, Sue. Yes, the timing is um, perfect for sharing this information. So in two separate occasions over the last week, um, staff of the VSBA learned, had some new learning. Um, it was brought to our attention by both a Vermont school board member and by the Ohio School Board Association that the term stakeholder can cause pain or discomfort for some people. The word stakeholder appears in the VSBA's strategic plan goal area one, as Sue just mentioned. Um, and as we're learning about this, we wanted to share with you. From 1778 to 1871, the United States signed more than 500 treaties with tribes across North America, acknowledging that each tribe was an independent nation with their own right to self-determination and self-rule. All of these treaties have been violated or broken by the U.S. government, with Native Americans and First Nations people still fighting for treaty rights in federal courts and in the United Nations. Colonizing settlers staked their claims on land occupied by indigenous peoples. Placing the word stakeholder and other words uh, with other words can help reduce generational trauma and pain. We're hoping to use language to help heal and connect rather than to continue the injustice. The whole purpose of the term stakeholder is to collaborate and communicate. And so we'll be working to use preferred replacement words such as partners, collaborators, participants, interested parties, groups. And so for the work in the strategic plan in goal one, we can retitle this goal area to simply say engagement. Thank you for that information, Sandra. Um, and after we review the first goal in the strategic plan, um, if the board wants to um, you know, consider replacing the term stakeholder throughout here with another word, we can certainly um, do that or the staff can do that at, at a later point. Um, so first, let's take a look at how the monitoring report is set up. For each goal, there are objectives on the far left of the page. And those have been identified by the board. And I believe I would, I would be, you could be looking like on page 30 now of your packet to see what I'm talking about. Um, under each objective, there are key results in the middle of the page identified by the staff as ways to reach the objective that's been identified by the board. And on the far right, the staff reports on activities and progress for each key result. Um, now let's take a look at the first goal set out on page 29 of your board packet, which is stakeholder engagement or just engagement. Increase and improve engagement with members and external stakeholders. So that is the, um, that's the goal. And then on pages 30 through 35 of your board packet, we're gonna work our way down from the goal to the two objectives under that goal to the key results under each objective. On the far left, um, on page 30, 
you can see the first objective under the engagement goal is objective 1.1, increase engagement with local school board members. To the right of that objective on pages 30 through 32 are the five staff developed to achieve the objective of increasing engagement with local school board members. So here's an important um, piece. As we report on this section of the monitoring report, please keep in mind these questions. Are there topics you think belong in the key results that staff should consider? And is there other information you would like to see reported? And I'll, I'll keep repeating those questions to you um, as we go through this. If you could go to key result 1.1.1, that's the very first key result in the um, monitoring report, it pertains actually to you all, the VSBA board members. And what it says is by December 31st, 2025, increase the number of annual communications between VSBA regional representatives, that's you all, and local school board members in their region to double the baseline level of FY24 as measured by a communication tracking tool. Activities and progress under this key result are going to be reported today by Carrie Lamb, and um, I'll hand it over to Carrie to um, do that quick report. Right, and this should be um, very obvious to all of you because you're doing the work. <laughs> um, over the last year, we created the baseline for um, based on, on your communication. Um, remember, I sent emails to you all with the sample emails. And and then you let us know in the tracking in the communications tool on that spreadsheet um, when you send something out. So we were able to track from that um, our beginning for our tracking for this. And um, you'll see on that spreadsheet um, where we are at the end of FY24 and our goal or where we are so far in FY25, which has just started. So there's not any in there yet, um, except for of course, the Bennington Rutland that just sent out their regional meeting after we sent this out. So you guys win the first one of the year. <laughs> um, so that is um, how we are addressing that um, key result 1.1.1. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. So before we move on to the next key result, this is where I'm going to ask those questions again. Are there topics you think belong in this key result that the staff should consider? Or is there other information you would like to see reported here? Or any comments on this? I'm not seeing anything, so I'm going to go on to the next key um, result which is 1.1.2. And this one pertains to the annual conference and states by December 31, 2025, increase school board member participation in the VSBA VSA annual conference from 89 in 2022 to 400 in 2025. Um, activities in progress under this KR will be reported by Debbie Singeiser today. And I'm gonna hand it over to Debbie. Thanks, Sue. Good evening, everybody. I just want to give you some recent numbers for our conference uh, participation. In 2022, we had 89 board members who registered for that conference. Um, last fall in 2023, which was my first conference, we went up a little bit uh, to 106 board members who registered for the fall conference. So we increased by 17. Um, so I guess I would say is that while we are trending in the right direction, we are going up. Um, we're not going fast enough to reach our goal of 400 by 2025, which is just two years away. Um, we've done a lot of talking about what some of the barriers might be to participating in the annual conference. We've identified um, those members who are self-employed not being able to attend because that's a loss of income for them. Those who aren't able to take a day off of work, especially teachers who are board members because they're not permitted to miss a day of work for the conference, from my understanding. Um, we also have the issue of childcare for some of our board members. 
So what we've decided to do for this fall is to try a new format, um, one that offers options and some flexibility. Flexibility. So what we're doing this year is we're still back at Lake Maury again. We will try, um, we're having the conference uh, limited to one full day and it'll fall on a Friday. Um, and that's Friday, October 25th, for those who don't know. And on Thursday, we will have two other as kind of standalone events. First, there'll be a pre-conference training for board officers and superintendents. And um, that will be in the afternoon on Thursday, October 24th. And that'll be immediately followed by a celebration of public education in Vermont, which will be very much all about our students. Um, and there will be an exposition of student work in the form of exhibits laid out all over Lake Maury. Um, during, and there will be a reception during that time. And that will be followed by a traditional banquet dinner Thursday evening. Uh, and during that dinner, we'll have student performances. Um, and so our, and so when you the registration just opened on Monday of this week, and if you haven't seen it yet, when you go in, it'll say that members have the option to register for all three of those events, or they can register for one, or they can register for two, and there's different pricing for um, each of those events. So our again, our goal is to see um, how this format works and um, see if that will give us a bit more of a bump this year. Um, I do want to make an appeal to all of you that um, you are our best promoters for this conference. And um, so I'm hoping that in your communication to your local board members in September, this might be um, the topic that you would choose to communicate. And the staff, of course, like we always do, can help you. We'll draft a, an email for you to send out. Thank you very much, Debbie. Um, before we move into the next KR, I, I definitely would like to acknowledge that um, we are we are considering changing this one to a more realistic but still challenging goal of 200 um, board members participating in the 2025 conference because that's only uh, a year away. And um, we would, after that, of course, still be striving to increase and get up to that 400 number. Um, but we do want to be, you know, realistic about what we think that uh, we can possibly accomplish. Um, for board members, love to hear your feedback on that. And if you think there's topics um, that belong in this key result that the staff sh should consider or other information you would like to see reported here. And Jim Salzgiver Jim. has a raised hand. Yeah, just, uh, you know, got to try to put it in contact. How many, how many school board members are there in Vermont? There are, it's sort of a um, always changing number with resignations and appointments and all that, but um, it's between 870 and 900. Okay. Thanks. Any other input on this one? We're really looking forward to the conference this year, seeing if we can get more this year. Um, I'll go on to key result 1.1.3, and this one pertains to the awards programs. Um, and it states by December 31, 2025, increase the nominations of member districts in VSBA awards programs from two in 2022 to 12 in 2025. Um, activities in progress under this key result are gonna be reported by Debbie today. Um, and I'll turn it back over to you, Debbie. Great. So. Unfortunately, this year we did not have any nominations. Um, we're not exactly sure why. Perhaps there's not enough publicity about the awards program. That could be one reason. So people are simply just not aware of the program. Or it could also be because this was a really tough year for um, boards in terms of getting their budgets passed. And so um, I'm wondering if um, some boards like my own, which are very small, we just didn't have the bandwidth to think about anything else other than getting that budget passed. Um, so during the summer, the VSBA Awards Committee met twice and made some pretty significant changes to the program and how we can strengthen it. 
and I don't want to steal that committee's thunder because at next at our next board meeting in September, um, the VSBA Awards Committee will be reporting out on on those decisions. But just to give you a little preview, um, we've changed the um, we have a new application process that will include new criteria and some um, easier to use forms, um, and those will be launched in 2025. So that's what I have to say about that, KR. Thank you, Debbie. Any questions on that one? Any comments? Any other information you'd like to see reported on this item from the board? Not seeing any hands, so I'm going to move on to key result 1.1.4. And this one pertains to the weekly update emails and states by December 31, 2025, increase the open rates of the weekly email from 62% in 2022 to 80%. Um, activities in progress under this key result are gonna be reported by Carrie Lamb today. Hello again, everyone. Um, so what you'll see in your report is that in May, um, our open rates were at 79%, which is pretty darn close to our goal of 80%. So we're very excited about that. Um, June's went down to 72. I'm thinking it was the end of the school year. Um, and so that's what um, I think I'm learning this more than anything is the different times of year, we will have different percentages. Um, and then uh, in July, it was down to 66%, which is still above the 62 where we started, but July, you know, is a vacation month. So I'm sure everyone wasn't all, wasn't opening all of their emails during July. And a lot of boards don't have meetings in July as well. So, so um, um, that's what I have to report. I think we're well on our way of progressing towards our 80%. That is great news. It's really um, encouraging to hear that. Thank you, Carrie. Looks like Gaston has a raised hand. Go ahead, Gaston. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the question that I have is, is is the open rate pretty similar across the state or are there regions or do you have the ability to determine this within the state that have higher or lower open rates than other areas of the state? Over. I cannot see that. I'm sorry to say, I can't see where they, I can see that they're in the state of Vermont or if they're in Australia, but I can't see within the state of Vermont um, the, you know, where they are open more and less. I can see if I can ask MailChimp if they can eventually work on that. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, to me, I just think it would be kind of, I don't know where everybody else is at, but, you know, when you start looking at data, I mean, you know, Yes, it's good to see what it is for all of, you know, the state, but, you know, who knows, there may be regions that are low, and it may be low for a reason, i.e., you know, they don't have access to, I don't know, I don't know what the reasons would be, but you know what I mean, over? Yeah, it's a great uh, idea, Gaston. Yeah. I'll look into it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts on this one? Any other kind of information you'd like to see reported here? Okay, I'm gonna go on to KR 1.1.5, which pertains to the collective bargaining database and states by December 31st, 2025, create a baseline rate for membership use of the collective bargaining database in FY24 and increase the rate by 15%. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Carrie Lamb to report on um, this key result. All right, me again, guys. So um, exciting news and great time to have this conversation. Um, for the last few months, um, we've had a panel of expertise um, on negotiations that have met with us, with Sue and I. And we've created a new negotiations toolkit on our website. And we've actually replaced the bargaining, um, the collective bargaining database. The collective bar bargaining database did cost us, I think about $4,000 a year just for them to keep it for us. I did all the work. All they did was keep it on the server. Um, and we, uh, 
that was the first thing that brought up, oh, should, we should do something differently here. And then um, secondly, um, there's so much more information that people could use. So we thought the best thing to do is to go to the business managers, superintendents, and bo school board chairs of the um, negotiations and um, conduct this panel, which were wonderful people. I wish I had their names right here in front of me, and I don't. Um, but they uh, gave us a great deal of insight as to what they'd like to use, what they all use, what type of information that they um, research to prior to doing negotiations. Um, I went out and got all of that information. We created the negotiation tool toolkit, which went live last week, I believe it was. Um, so this KR will change. Um, for the next year, we'll be setting our baseline for open rate for the new negotiation toolkit. And the following year, we hope to continually increase that. Um, and I hope that all of you have had a chance to or will uh, try and take some time to, to check out that negotiation toolkit. It's under resources on our website. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. It, was, it turned out really well. And I had some really great advice from, from some very knowledgeable people as to what they'd like to use. I, we're always open to suggestions. So if you look at it and you go, you know what would be really great is if you had this or that. Um, um, suggestions are great. We we can't always fulfill all of them, but we can find ways to um, put out the information for other people to use it. Thanks, Carrie. That I agree. It's really exciting to have that new toolkit. And um, we had some some VSBA board members that helped uh, that were on that committee, um, Mark Koenig and Suzanne Buck. And I'm I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Was there anyone else from the VSBA board? Can't remember. I don't think so. Maybe Neil. Were you on that? Neil? No. Okay. Nope. Yeah, it was a great group. Um. So, are there other topics you think belong in this key result that the staff should could should consider? Um. Or is there other information you'd like to see reported here? Um. Understanding that this is one is changing a little bit from the, the database to the new um, toolkit. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so for me, I think this is awesome. Um, uh, Elaine Collins sent out the, you know, the link to to this, and I went in and and took a look at it. The the only thing I would say that may be of interest is, um, quickly here, we're going to be having a webinar on negotiations, and I know that in the toolkit there was an archived webinar, and so I made the point you know, in an email back to Elaine and to our negotiations committee that while that webinar in the toolkit is archived, there is a uh, webinar that's coming up, I don't know, sometime in October or no, or yeah, I think it's September, October. But anyway, it seems to me that that may be something to include in here as well, because it is, you know, associated with the collective bargaining, if if you will. Um, that's the only comment I would have. Over. Yes, thanks. Yeah, we will definitely idea. include it. We'll definitely. And include it. something else that I thought of as you were saying that is, I can put the registration for that webinar right on that page as well because that's the same topic. So I'll put the registration on there for the webinar as well as after it's over. And from here forward, whenever we have something relevant to a webinar that's relevant, we'll we'll put it on there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I, again, I, I I recall seeing it in the in the VSBA weekly update. So then I was like, okay, got to get back. So I actually went back, got the date, and and put that in the email. But I think having uh, registration right there in the toolkit certainly would be awesome. Over. Great. Thanks, Gaston. Anybody else? Okay. We have covered the um, all of the key results under objective 1.1 in the engagement area, which again is increase engagement with local school board members. Next time we cover this goal area, we'll focus on objective 1.2, which is um, did read engage with external stakeholders, 
And um, I would propose we change that to external collaborators. Um, so if the board would like to um, consider that recommendation before um, we move on to the next agenda item, um, you certainly have time to do that. Yes. Could I have a motion? I'll make a motion to to update the uh, one point two to, to to take out stakeholders and put in collaborate collaborators. Okay, engage with external collaborators. I'll second. All right. So Jim and Suzanne, and we we would do that wherever there's stakeholders, golden collaborators. Uh, Mark, uh, let's any discussion. Is that yeah. Mark, so or you have a one of the definitions of collaborator is someone who works with the enemy. So, like the French collaborated with the Nazis. So, uh, if we're worried about how words are used, I'm not sure collaborator is necessarily. So, the, maybe, uh, you know, yeah, maybe let's wait. Let's, uh, let's, you might want to just play with the source and bring us, let's, the let's, change break, of let's word play with the resources. Time. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Yeah, we'll bring it back and a okay. recommendation next time after we. Okay, so we'll Jim, would you be okay tabling your mesh? Your, yeah, or, I'm fine or... with that. Of course, we can use parties, but then maybe they were considered party yeah. animals or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's hard well, to come with up that, with language like that. Yeah. Yeah, with that, I'm looking at time, and I don't want to get you. It's the summer. I don't want to get you. I don't hear too late, so I'm looking just to get a we our consent agenda. So could I have a motion to approve our June minutes? So moved, Tara Sweet. And second by Joe. You had your hand up, Joe. Yeah. Did you get that, Carrie? Any discussion? Yes. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. And I see all hands raised. Yep. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, the motion carries. So the last the last piece we have the Eastern Region meeting uh, is uh, you're able to register up to three VSBA board members in addition to the three executive committee members that we are that are already going. It, not all executive committee members could go to the Eastern Region uh, meeting this year is going to take place in Rhode Island. So we're wondering uh, you don't need to answer it right now, but we're putting it out there. The sooner the better. If you were interested in joining us uh, in meet in this. Uh, regional meeting it's an eastern regional meeting and basically is so the eastern side tries to it does this meeting and it's going to be in rhode island it's great learning and it's uh, september 26 through the 28 29 sunday 29 right yep. so 20, 27th through the 29th 27th through the 29th yes and i did email you, all the board members uh today with the information about yeah. it um, so you can just respond to my email if you're interested and the last little thing is uh, most of you have responded i can't see there's seven of you that wrote your name so i know who you are and then there's uh, six others that i don't know who you are but i don't have everybody i'm really hoping to have a hundred percent participation so if by any chance you haven't fill out the executive directors uh, it's I had said hey, August 15, which is tomorrow. Yeah, I'm willing to extend that if needed, but if you could do it today, that would be wonderful. And with that, I'm looking for, oh, Barbara, you already you filled it up. You okay, that, that, yeah, I had a you quick, did it. You okay, did it. thank you, thank you. Yeah, so Mark, Barbara, Linda, Dan, MacArthur, Jim, Mark Kaufman, and Neil, from the ones that wrote their names, right? I don't have not every because it's optional, right? So I don't have everybody here. Yeah. Okay. If, could you if we've then, done it and we didn't put our name in and we try to go do it again? Will it tell us we've done it already? No. Uh, no, it won't. So we could theoretically yeah. do it twice. Mm. <laughs> I I think it'll come I to you. I'm I'm hoping that it will come to you. You know, like if you get in there and you're like, eh, wait, I already you have the slightest. I, okay. We're almost there. I have 14 yeah, responses, probably the but first I don't question. have <laughs> your name. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm looking for 
a motion to adjourn. So I just get you out of here a little late, not super late. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate you. It's a big job and wow. And you, you, you nail it. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we have Thank a really you, good Paul. team. Okay. Thank you. So we're adjourning by consensus. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's really nice to see you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.